Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Rocket Craft. I hope you're all doing well and having a great day. So, uh, I'm over in the Nether, as you can see, and I've found something that I've been looking for for a little while. Um, there's there's many farms that I've made on this world, as you know, and I do love making farms. And there's one farm that I've always wanted to make, but never actually had the opportunity to until now. Uh, in the gloom down there, you can just about see the faintness of a fortress. And it's it's a good placed fortress because a lot of it is over lava here. Uh, there's a, there was a little bit of land mass down below in part of a soul sand valley biome. But I've uh, taken the time to sort of flatten it out and um, level it all off and mob proof it. And... Yeah, I've got this little sort of walkway up the back there that's, um, I think is going to be perfect for this farm, I hope. So, uh, as you know, we are on a simulation distance of 8 on this world, which is quite a large area, which can make it a bit problematic when you're trying to come up with a mob farm like this. There's a lot more areas that need to be mob-proofed than when you're playing on a realm on a simulation distance of 4. So, I've got to go all the way way back over here take out all of this sort of crimson forest biome flatten this all out slab it so that nothing's going to spawn over here um yeah so there's a there's a fair bit of work to do to get this to be fully mob proofed within um the uh the area that i need it to be and then of course we've got to deal with all of the fortress as well and mob proofing this so that's going to take a little while so what are the uh, the benefits of building a fortress farm you ask so what what is it that i could possibly need from this farm and that that right there was pretty much it in a nutshell um i'm hoping to farm loads of wither skeletons in this farm not for their skulls not for their bones but for their coal and obviously you know you're going to get some blazes in there as well a couple of magma cubes and skeletons as well but yeah, I'm. Uh, this is just going to be a coal farm for me. I wanted to make a renewable coal farm. There isn't one already on the server, so uh, th yeah, uh, things are getting a bit hairy here. <laughs> I'm going to just uh, bug out, just uh, get away from those guys, let my health build back up again. But yeah, so there's um, there's a lot of nice drops from this farm, but uh, we don't really have a use for blaze rods because Mojo already has that uh, has that sorted for us. So. Um, it's just going to be for coal. I don't need bones, just going to be for coal, which seems a bit extreme, but I just wanted to build it, you know, because I love building farms. So, as you can see, they're all spawning like crazy on that platform back there, and uh, I'm going to get started on building this farm in just a moment. So, the tutorial that I'm going to be using for this farm is by JC Plays. He makes lots and lots of useful bedrock farms um, for Minecraft, and this one sort of worked pretty well except um, it didn't in my case so in in the tutorial his fortress uh, was working fine and I saw in the comments a lot of people saying like oh I'm not getting any spawns uh, I'm not getting any spawns and um, so these these spots here uh, just there are where the hard-coded spawning spots are in bedrock you've only got specific spots within structures where mobs will actually spawn so it's, uh, it's easy to actually find these out by just placing loads and loads of glass planes and then going back about sort of 30 blocks to allow them to spawn. Uh, so right there, right there would be a spawning spot. So I need to mark that out in a minute and um, and highlight that with some slabs. I know it's not easy to see with uh, nether brick slabs on nether brick. But, um, so this one here would be another one as well. So we could potentially put uh, another killing... Uh, booth there like a trident killer uh, so that's that and um, so we'll take out the glass panes so it's going to be that one to the right hand side there but um, yeah not that if you followed the tutorial though for JC plays to the letter that you'd actually in my situation and many other people's situation end up actually covering up your spawning spot which is no good because uh, it makes a difference with these structures um, whether they're going north to south or east to west in his tutorial his one was going east to west 
Uh, but I found out that if you followed his tutorial, then you'd actually end up covering your spawning spot up when you're building the farm if your uh, walkway is running north to south like my one is. So I've left a, uh, a comment pinned in that tutorial to let everyone know I found out why they weren't uh, able to get this farm working um, because it actually matters whether it's work running north to south or east to west. It makes uh, all the difference. So now that we've got all the spawning spots worked out, we can build a farm. I'm not going to show you that because it's just a load of trident killers and some collection systems. So we're going to AFK for a little while uh, just to get an idea of uh, the drops and stuff and if it's working and I don't know where that magma cubes come from but uh, yeah we'll be back in just a second right so I've built two of the modules as you can see the blazes are dropping down into the trident killer and getting chewed up you've got to make sure that your AFK spot is below the level of the trident killer otherwise they'll just keep sort of rising up and not wanting to go down into it but as long as um, as long as your AFK spot is just below the, tr the Trident Killer level, then it's good. So we've built two modules. I'm probably going to add a third one as well, but I just wanted to get an idea of uh, the sort of the rates and the drops and stuff in this thing. As you can see, in Bedrock, mobs have like a pack spawning mechanic or herd spawning, as they call it, where you can get like groups of mob spawn. So like there, there was only one skeleton, but sometimes you can get groups of up to three. Same with the Willis, with the skeletons there. You can see like three have spawned, I think, from their swords. I think there's three there. Um, and it can be the same with blazes. You can get between one and three spawning from the same spawn attempt in the game. So hopefully... Hopefully those idiots are going to walk off the edge there in a minute. They're, they're going to realise that they can walk... Well, they, they think they can walk off the edge, but uh, really they'll just fall into the Trident Killer. Um, but yeah, so it seems to be working. Uh, it seems to be getting sort of reasonably good spawn rates out of this thing. Um, so hopefully everything's working and we can do a little AFK session and test out the rates. Right, so uh, I think I tested it for about half an hour or so maybe a little bit longer uh, just to see what we're going to get out of this farm. I uh, built myself a little ghast shelter because obviously uh, the ghasts are a thing still. They'll find somewhere to spawn no doubt. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so we've turned the trident killer off and these guys are just chilling over here. Can just turn it back on again and get rid of them. Uh, I haven't like done this like religiously about like time or anything like that. I just wanted to see an, a rough idea of the rates that we can expect from this farm. So, um, and you know, I, I just collect collect the little bit of XP that you get. There's a little bit, but so I built this third module up over here, and we can go down here quickly and see what we've got. So we have got a few stacks of coal. There is there is some some coal in there, which is nice. Uh, a few wither skulls as well. But so much junk. Look at all this junk. There's stone swords, there's arrows, there's bits of rubbish armor from the skeletons and bows. So much trash. So much trash. And it's just going to fill up my storage system. So to make this farm properly, we're going to be building a nice storage system on it. A proper storage system with saltation and burning all the junk. So here we go.
Right, so we've got a nice storage system in place now. We've just got to quickly set fire to this nether rack for the burning system. The droppers up above are going to be just constantly going. Any stone swords and bows and armor and arrows and all the rubbish stuff that you just don't need, that's all getting yeeted into the fire. And I'm just going to keep all the nice things like the coal, the blaze rods, the bones, uh, the wither skulls, blaze heads as well you get from this farm and uh, I'll put I've put a few extra storage um, chests in um, for coal because that's the main thing here I want to catch all the coal before the fire pits of doom so uh, there is like three that collect coal here so what I have thought though is this is rather delicate stuff and it needs to be protected from gas so I've built a big ugly box around it <laughs> of, uh, of nether brick to protect it from ghast fireballs because that is fireproof fireball proof right so we'll come back to that farm later on in the episode but in the meantime we've got a couple of statues to build we've got to, to honor our goats on the server and uh, the first one is going to be mr sinister lobo who won the uh the tag game and also the uhc solo event we recently had so here we go <laughs> So that's one goat down, uh, that one was quite a challenging build, he's got a very weird patterning on his ripped t-shirt and his head is just completely all over the place compared to the other statues but I, I really like how that, that one turned out. So we're going to move on now to the next uh, statue, here we go!
there we have it guys, the goat father of the Rocket Craft server himself, Mr. V Hunted, uh, in all of his glory, that was definitely the most challenging statue I have had to build so far. The amount of detail on this guy's skin is just insane, the helmet, the face, the beard, the armour, just everything about him really pushed my building skills to their absolute meagre limits. Um, but um, again, he's come out awesome, I think. Like, I had to really, really try hard to find the right blocks as well for that block palette. But anyway, we're back over here at the Fortress Farm. We've AFK'd this thing overnight, which is you know a good sort of eight odd hours. Uh, and uh, it's time to find out what exactly we got out of this thing. So let's head down into the storage system. And the first one is coal, because that's the most important thing. And yes, we've got a whole double chest full of coal there. Oh, nearly another double chest full of coal. This has been a very, very productive AFK session. Like blaze rods for days, like, yeah. Uh, and quite a few wither skulls as well. Not that I need those really, because we've got the wither skull farm. Uh, some magma creams. No blaze heads yet, though. Um, well, there is probably a few in there, but they... They have to store up in the uh, system. And yeah, no no sort of secondary coal there. So all in all, that has been very, very successful. It was a lot of work to spawn proof the entire area. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like, it is a bit daunting, but you've got to try and find a nether fortress that is over a lava lake. And in our case as well, it's got to be within 900 blocks because that's the sort of the range of the, the nether that doesn't get reset on rocket craft. So anything outside of 900 blocks and it, it wouldn't stay permanently so very lucky to find this fortress where it was so there is just one final piece of business that we need to attend to to wrap up this episode and finish off the uh, the demise game permanently and that is of course to come down to my little dungeon here where I keep my trophies of the uh, the players that I murderized in traps and stuff during this game we got Wells, we got Sonic, and we got Mojo. And of course, you know, now that means that we get to add our good friend Moist Puffin onto that wall there. Uh, one of my victims. And, uh, oh, yeah. You uh, you can probably guess where this is going, can't you? <laughs> What's about to happen. So let's, uh, let's just go with it. And yet again, yeah, we find ourselves over in the modern area, our wind loads in. And uh, of course, you know that we've been summoned by Mr. Death himself. How are you doing? I uh, hope you hope you're well. Uh, I hope you were pleased with uh, with all of my efforts. Welcome back. So nice to see you again. Oh, thank you, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's been it has been a little while since we last spoke, hasn't it? What is that ridiculous thing on your head? Well, um, that's a very good question. Yeah, I I was uh, doing some end busting with Lanny, and um, there was a little bit of a mix up with uh, a pumpkin head in a dispenser that never got into the dispenser. Instead, I managed to put it on my face instead, and it's kind of stuck there. Uh, oh, oh dear. Um. There. That's better. Oh, uh, gee, thanks. That's um, that is one way of removing that, I guess. Uh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> um, yeah, thanks. Congratulations on finally killing one of those goats. Yeah, they um, they really didn't make it easy for me. They just were so stubborn. They just wouldn't die. So I had to take matters into my own hand and uh, set up that, that devious trap uh, that you saw. So it worked though. We, we got the job done and we've now, uh, we've now finished our work with you. I have left you a reward in the chest 
Oh, oh well, you didn't have to do that. Um, I do appreciate your uh, your generosity and your gratitude. So um, let me just put my stuff back on. Except not that, not that. I'm not going to make that mistake again. I'm going to put my helmet on this time. And uh, yeah, we can we can just jump down. And is it? I guess it's downstairs here. Is that what you mean? Let's have a look. Hello. What is it? Mm, interesting. Not what I was expecting. You have served me well and brought many souls to me. Yeah, well, like I said, it wasn't exactly easy, but um, we got there in the end, didn't we? We got there in the end. So, yeah, thank you for this. I'll, uh, I'll have fun trying to find out where this leads me to. Goodbye for now. Yeah, um, thank you very much, and uh, yeah, we'll see you, see you later, sir. Um, but yeah, so we've just about run out of time for this episode, guys. I hope you've uh, enjoyed it. Um, I especially enjoyed building the statues there. They were hard work, but they were worth it in the end. I think you will agree. They uh, they do look absolutely epic. Look at them. Look at them. <laughs> but yeah so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this episode guys and if you did enjoy it then uh, obviously you know give it a like subscribe if you're not subscribed already and uh, don't forget to catch the uh, the live streams that I'm going to try and get back to doing every week on uh, on Twitch uh, and I will see you for another episode of Rocketcraft very very soon take care guys and bye for now <laughs>